Hello friends. Today in this video I am going to be telling the story of the 2020 Netflix mystery fantasy, Show Lock and Key Season 1. I will do all seasons of the show in the next few videos, so I hope you are able to check those ones out as well. If you just want to recap a single episode of the season, I will put the episode timestamps in the description below. But since it is a long 10 episode season, I will get right to it. Episode 1. Welcome to Matheson. The series begins where we meet the Locke family and they are moving to Matheson, Massachusetts from Seattle because the father of the family, Rendell Locke, was just murdered by a boy named Sam Lesser. They are moving to a house that the Rendells' family owned and they are moving there because the widow, Nina Locke, can't afford to pay for a home and this one will be free for them. The others in the family include the three children. The oldest is Tyler Locke, the middle one is Kinsey Locke and the youngest of the family is Bodie Locke. When they arrive to their new home, they are met by Rendell's brother Duncan who shows them around and the house is famously known as Key House in the town. Everyone knows the Key family and their story. They are the elite class of the city. Once all settled in, Bodhi finds a well house out back and he hears a voice coming from the bottom of the well. It is a female voice and she tells him to be on the lookout for keys around the house. No one believes him when he tells his family about the echo voice he heard. Everyone starts school and Kinsey has a hard time making friends but Tyler makes him pretty fast because he is good at hockey. A student named Scott strikes a friendship with Kinsey and then invites her to be a part of his horror movie club called the Savini Squad. At the house, Bodie finds a key in Kinsey's bracelet and it is called the Anywhere Key. Bodie soon learns this key can transport him anywhere in the world if he walks through a door, but it has to be somewhere he has seen before. He teleports to an ice cream shop and then back home successfully. Bodhi then also finds another key in the sink that leads him to another dark realm where he finds his mother acting very strange. Bodhi goes to ask Echo how to save his mom and Echo tricks him into giving her the Anywhere key and then she vanishes. The key helped her escape the well house. Bodhi then tells Kinsey and Tyler about the keys and they work together to save their mom from the mirror key room. They now know they live in a magical house. The episode closes with Echo visiting Sam Lesser in prison, Rendell's murderer, and she is there to break him free. She's our antagonist. Episode 2. Trapper Keeper. The episode opens with the family discussing the keys, and they want to search for more around the house. Bodhi finds another key, but doesn't know what it does yet. Bodhi goes to ask a locksmith about the key, and he notices a lock on the back of the man's neck. He also meets a new friend Rufus, and we can tell they're going to be best friends. Rufus's mom is Ellie, and she is a caretaker of the house as well. Ellie was good friends with Rendell back in the day. Nina is finding out a bunch of new stuff about her deceased husband that she never knew about, and she wonders how much she actually knew the real him. Ellie tells Nina about a tragedy that a few of their friends and their friend group drowned as a sea cave when they were younger. Nina wonders why Rendell never told her this. Jump back over to Bodhi, and he is still trying to find the lock for the new key he found. We then see a keyhole on the back of his neck as well. Whoever is holding the key gets this special lock. Echo then visits Bodhi a little later in the episode and Echo tells Bodhi to find more keys and they can work together, but Bodhi isn't feeling it. We then see through flashbacks of Rendell with his children and he is the one that actually hid the Anywhere key in Kinsey's bracelet and she had no idea. Once Echo leaves, Bodhi then discovers the keyhole on the back of his neck and he goes for it and inserts the key. His whole body freezes and then another version of Bodhi shows up and also a glowing wooden box appears. The episode ends with Kinsey and Tyler discovering Bodhi in his room, but he is standing still and not moving. Then the other Bodhi shows up out of the box and tells his siblings to join him. Episode 3. Head Game. Kinsey and Tyler enter a colorful room, and this is the inside of Bodhi's head. This key is called the Head Key, and it allows the key holder to enter their brain and what they are thinking of. Bodhi then tells his siblings about Echo and how she might be a bad person and to look out for her. A few days later at school, Tyler gets in a fight with a teammate because the guy made fun of Kinsey. He is still dealing with the aftermath of his father dying and is taking it out on others around him. Speaking of Kinsey, she decides to use the head key and the room goes from sad to happy back to sad again and we can tell she isn't handling things the best either. A monster then attacks Tyler and they leave her brain as soon as possible, but when they get back out, Tyler is still hurt from the attack. Bodhi is looking around the house and he finds a new key with a skull on it and when he uses it on a door, he turns into a ghost and he can roam the property. He has a chat with his great-grandfather Chamberlain Locke, who tells him to watch out for Echo. Bodhi also notices Echo in the well house, shouting down the well for someone named Lucas. Bodhi then wakes back up in his body and tells Tyler what he saw. Tyler wonders who this Lucas person might be. Kinsey is set to go on a date with Scott, 
but she is nervous and she uses the head key once again, but alone this time. Kinsey confronts the creature from earlier and brings it out and kills it. She then buries it and Echo is watching all of this happen from afar. Episode 4. The Keepers of the Keys. The episode opens up with Kinsey seemingly very happy, and it's probably due to the fact she removed that fear from her head. Kinsey also tells Scott she wants to see him again, and that she might be crushing on him. We then jump over to Nina who is still doing some more research and trying to find out anything she can on Rendell's past. In his high school friend group, only two remain alive. Ellie, and then another one that is in a psychiatric ward. Jump over to said psychiatric ward and Echo visits this woman named Erin. Echo taunts Erin telling her all of her friends will be dead soon. This Echo chick is ruthless. Tyler saw how Kinsey removed the fear from her head, so he wants to try to add something to his head. Tyler then takes a history book with him inside his head and leaves it there. When he gets out, he has learned everything that was inside the book. This would have been nice to have in high school for real. He uses this knowledge to impress a nerdy girl at school by the name of Jackie. Scott heads over to Key House to hang out with Kinsey and she shows him the head key and he is astounded at what he is seeing. They then share their first kiss. The following day, Echo shows up and kidnaps Bodhi when the others aren't paying attention and uses the Anywhere key to leave. Echo tells him to hand over the keys he has found, but he says he doesn't have them and his siblings have them at the time. Echo is pissed and leaves angrily. Echo heads to the prison once again and she hands him a key, but we don't know what one yet. Feel like the Anywhere key could break him out of prison pretty easily, but we will see. Episode 5. Family Tree. This episode opens up with the siblings finding a new key inside the piano. Kinsey uses this key and discovers that it can shut people's mouths so they can't talk. She then uses the control key to embarrass one of her bullies at school and another student named Gabe starts helping her embarrass Eden and Scott thinks they are taking it too far. At home, Nina continues to investigate and she is starting to believe Ellie isn't telling her the whole truth and that Ellie is hiding something about her past. Tyler then confronts Kinsey about using the key on Eden at school and he tells her they agreed not to use the keys in public and draw attention to themselves. After their fight, Kinsey hangs out with the Savini squad and Scott wants to use the keys to make a killer horror movie. Scott also shows Kinsey a photo of her father Rendell and his friends when they were in high school. The same friend group that had the drowning accident happened to? Kinsey then shows this picture to Tyler later and makes up with him for fighting earlier. They then find another key in a vase that has a flower on it. When they use the key on a nearby tree, jars pop up and inside the jars are a ton of memories and when Tyler looks at one, it is a memory of his father killing one of his friends when he was younger. Now I really want to know about Rendell's youth because he might have been a bad guy and that may be why Sam killed him. The episode ends with Nina heading over to meet with Joe, the principal of the high school and whenever she gets there, she finds him dead with a plastic bag around his head. The camera then pans down below and we see that Ellie was inside the house. Episode 6. The Black Door. Nina had just found Joe and dialed the police to report a murder. The police think he did it to himself. After finding the memory jar, Kinsey shows it to Duncan, but he doesn't remember it happened at all. He says he doesn't really remember much about his childhood. Tyler is upset and thinks his father was a murderer, but Kinsey refuses to believe it. Tyler and Kinsey sure do disagree on a lot of things. Gotta love sibling rivalries. Nina is still trying to solve Joe's murder and she confronts Ellie and wants to know the truth and Nina asks Ellie where she was the night before when Joe was found dead. She says she was at home the whole night which we know isn't the truth. Could Ellie really be responsible for murder? We then go check on Kinsey who is with the Savini squad looking for locations to shoot their horror movie. Kinsey suggests they go down to the sea cave, but we know she only wants to go there to research about the drownings. Pretty irresponsible to bring your friends to a place knowing that the sea has killed people in the cave. When they arrive there, Kinsey finds a huge glowing blue door that has a keyhole as well. The tide rolls in, so they leave quickly and Kinsey almost dies until Gabe saves her life. Scott and Kinsey then fight because she put all of their lives at risk. I'm with Scott on this one. Gabe and Kinsey then spend more time together and Kinsey tells Gabe about all of the keys and they also share a kiss together. She moves on fast. We then jump to a house party where Tyler is at and he is getting pretty drunk. Echo then shows up at the party as well as Jackie who fights with Tyler because he is being erratic. The episode closes with Tyler leaving the party and Echo walks up to him to talk to him. He doesn't know what Echo looks like yet. Only Bodhi does. He then gets in a car with her. Tyler asks her name and she tells him her name is Dodge. To close it out, we see Sam Lesser show up at Key House. Episode 7. Dissection. 
The episode opens with a flashback showing Sam was actually a student at the school Rendell was the counselor of, and Sam didn't care for Rendell at all. It's also shown that he was hearing Dodge's voices telling him to take out Rendell. I'll call her Dodge now instead of Echo as she finally said her real name. Jump back to present day where Sam has just made it to Key House with a gun, and he points it at Nina. Sam tells her he wants the head key, but she has no idea what that even is. Kinsey overhears this from upstairs, and she hides the head key. Kinsey and Bodie then go downstairs to try and talk sense into Sam. Dodge sends Sam to get the rest of the keys from them. Apparently there is a rule with the keys, and you can't steal them from a Locke family member, you have to be given them. That's why she can't just take them, and also why she can't just kill them. You have to be willingly given the keys by a Locke family member, and Locks are the only ones that can create keys for the house as well. Tyler then gets back to the house and tackles Sam before he can shoot. We then see the key that Dodge gave Sam earlier was the flame key which can be used to start fires. He uses it to get Tyler off of him and being scared, Kinsey said she buried the key and will take Sam to it as long as he doesn't kill anyone. She's obviously lying as we saw her hide it upstairs. Kinsey takes him outside to buy time for Tyler to go and find the head key and when Sam realizes she is lying, he goes inside to confront Tyler. Tyler then uses the head key on Sam to go inside his head. Inside his head, Tyler learns that Sam only killed Rendell because Dodge told him to and said he would be free of all pain if he followed her orders. Sam fell in love with her over time. They then exit Sam's head and he is now in possession of the head key and then Dodge shows up as well. Tyler yells at him not to give the key to Dodge because she is just using him to get the keys. Dodge then stabs Sam in the stomach and takes the head key from him. She can't take the keys from the locks, but since Sam isn't a lock, she can take the key from him. Dodge then tells Sam he is useless and there's nothing special about him. She played him like a fiddle. Dodge then bounces. Sam is about to die so he uses the ghost key, but when he goes outside as a ghost, the police show up and close the door behind him so he is stuck as a ghost and they rule him dead as his body is still. Episode 8. Ray of Freaking Sunshine The episode opens up at Ellie's house where Rufus is asking how long a boy is going to be staying with him and we are shocked to learn that this boy is Lucas and if you remember, Lucas was the name that Dodge was shouting down into the well earlier in the season. Is Ellie working with Dodge? She has been sketching his hell so far. Back to Key House where Kinsey and Tyler are a little freaked out because Nina doesn't remember what just happened and doesn't remember Sam breaking in and pointing a gun at her at all. They assume it is related to her heavy drinking. Bodie is hanging with Rufus and he is introduced to Lucas too. Back at Key House, Nina finds a magical cabinet that can fix things if she puts broken things in and she is amazed by it. She doesn't know about the magical keys because there is something with the house and adults forgetting everything. The same reason Duncan doesn't remember much either when he is in the house. Jump over to the psychiatric ward where Dodge is visiting Aaron once again and Dodge is trying to get answers from Aaron to where she can find the key known as the Omega Key. Tyler and Kinsey head to the sea cave to look for more answers and they once again see the blue door and they wonder what key opens it. They find names etched into the walls and one of them is Aaron Voss who we know is the woman locked up in the ward. Tyler thinks this Aaron chick will lead them to the key to open that door, pretty much what Dodge thought as well. Dodge uses the head key on Aaron, and she finds a memory of Aaron and Rendell hiding the key as youngsters. Dodge now knows where the Omega key is. This is why Dodge wanted the head key so bad. The Omega key must open the big blue door in the sea cave. She leaves and then Kinsey shows up right after to ask Aaron about the door. Aaron says the name Dodge, and then points to Lucas on a picture. They are confused why she thinks that Dodge is Lucas. We then find out there is another key called the transformation key, and it allows you to disguise yourself as other people. Dodge and Lucas are the same person, just in different bodies. The episode closes with Lucas back at Ellie's house telling her he knows where the Omega key is and it is hidden in Rendell's head. While this is going on, Tyler finds the Omega key in his dad's ashes. Episode 9. Echoes. The episode starts with Ellie at dinner one night a few months ago, and then Lucas shows up and tells her that he has a task for her. She needs to break into Key House and find a crown in the basement. When she goes to do it, she is caught by Nina, but talks her way out of it considering she is a caretaker for the property even though her job mainly deals with the well house. Ellie then grabs the crown and brings it back to her house to give to Lucas. It is called the Crown of Shadows. Apparently, they aren't working together, but Lucas is forcing Ellie to do this stuff for him so he won't kill Rufus, the only person she has left. We then jump back to present day with Kinsey and Tyler showing Bodhi the memory of their father killing Lucas and Bodhi is stunned because he just met a person claiming to be Lucas at Rufus's house. They now know for a fact Lucas is just Dodge and Lucas's old body. 
Bodhi tells Rufus about all of this, and Rufus wants to help them take down Dodge as well. They all meet together, and Ellie decides to finally tell the truth, and she allows all of them into her head with the head key. We then see they were in the sea cave, but then something happened that completely changed inside Lucas. He like, turned evil right away down there and started killing the friends. Rendell only killed Lucas because he didn't want Lucas to continue murdering people. He thought Lucas was possessed by a demon. They only said the friends drowned as a cover-up story and Ellie and Rindle vowed to protect the keys from being in the possession by anyone dangerous. Ellie was in love with Lucas back when he was alive, and she used the Echo Key to talk to dead Lucas in the well like Bodhi did earlier, but the only problem was it wasn't Lucas, it was Dodge disguising herself as dead Lucas. Ellie then explains to the others that whoever is in possession of the Crown of Shadows and the Omega Key can control the shadows and pretty much rule the darkness. A Demon's True Heaven the episode closes with Lucas showing up to grab the crown and the shadow key to rule over the darkness once and for all. Episode 10. Crown of Shadows. Season Finale. The episode begins with Dodge heading into Key House ready to take over the whole realm and now with the crown and key. She sets the shadow creatures onto the locks. She is there to find the Omega Key because that is the key that will open the black door in the caves. The black door contains even more demons that Dodge wants to release to the world so they can take over. Things die down a little bit once all the lights are on and they find Dodge's body out cold right near the front door. Kinsey comes up with the idea to take Dodge's body and throw it into the Black Door realm so she will be back with her demon friends and not in their reality anymore. And since they have the Omega Key, they can do this. The locks along with Scott, Jackie and Gabe help them carry Dodge's body to the cave and near the Black Door. Kinsey tells them to watch out for the glowing bullets that will be released once the door is open because those are demons and can possess you if you get hit by one. That is what happened to Lucas back in the day. They get the door open and throw Dodge back into the Shadow Realm to be with her demon friends. Meanwhile, Bodhi is with Rufus at his house and Bodhi is asking where Ellie is and Rufus has no idea. The night passes and the next morning everyone thinks Dodge is gone and it is over, but Ellie is still nowhere to be found and Rufus is getting worried. The season comes to a close as we see flashbacks throughout the season of Gabe, and we are shocked to learn that Gabe was Dodge this whole time. Dodge wasn't just disguising herself as Lucas, it was Gabe too, and she did this to become close to Kinsey and get as much information as possible. Plot twist. We also see that he used the transformation key on Ellie and disguised her as Dodge, and it wasn't Dodge that they threw through the Black Door realm, it was the real Ellie. Dodge was there as Gabe helping them do it. It is also shown that Eden was hit by one of the bullets, as well so she is now possessed along with Gabe. The final scene of the season is Gabe and Eden eating at a diner and obviously setting up for the season 2 story. And that is it for season of Lock and Key. Hope you enjoyed the story and are able to check out season 2 and 3 whenever I get those posted on the channel. Thanks for watching.